has he had the love and the care that most people would give to a pet. So Jeff has come to feel that the world is against him. A typical vandal? People are never typical. Every person is different with inner motivations of his own, often not even known to himself. In Jeff's hidden personality are many scars and many open wounds. Their causes are not easy to understand. Perhaps his home is at fault. It's not that the dishes are dirty and the house is messy. It's something much deeper. Perhaps the emptiness of a home that is lacking in love and affection. Whatever it may be, Jeff Turner has become an outsider made so by complex circumstances which he himself can't fully control or understand. Even among others of his own age, Jeff often feels left out and uncomfortable. Oh, three ounces, right. All right, somebody put him away. I'll, I'll do it. Oh, all right, Jeff. Now, that's a gain of three ounces over the day before yesterday. Can anyone suggest a cause? Wendy? It could be to the fat in the diet, Mr. Cole. Yes, yes, it could be. We have to consider that. But uh, what other causes might there be? Jeff? What? Do you have an idea? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, who can uh, think of other causes? Yes? Well, maybe... If Rightly or wrongly, well, Jeff has come to feel that everyone is against him. Outside, Jeff Turner is much like any boy on the block. But inside, he's eaten away with resentment and a desperate urge to get even. There are others at odds with the world, but for different reasons. Here is Don Cardiff. Donnie! Button up your coat! His folks have prodded and nagged at Don until without knowing it, he hates them and himself as well. Donnie! You forgot your scarf! Your scarf! And Ed Berger is a product of poverty made worse by the lack of family love and respect. 
Why don't you just get out then? I would have more money if you could get out. Well, you're a fine one. You better stop. Yeah, Mr. Case is my teacher. Oh, oh he's so funny. Oh, he's always tragic. These are city boys, but theirs is not only a city problem. Nor are all who get involved in vandalism necessarily deeply disturbed. But wherever the natural warmth of human feeling has been turned to resentment by constant lack of affection and understanding, there is danger of vandalism. Maybe we can do something. Well, let's go to a movie or something. What's playing? I don't know. Ah, what difference does it make? Watch to a movie. Hey, maybe I can get my old man's car. We can go for a ride. Can't get nobody to go with us. What's the fun? Sure we can. Sure we can get somebody. Like who? I don't know. Somebody. These are the seeds of vandalism, boredom and inner resentment, which lead to the destruction of property. This is more than a simple matter of keeping the hands busy. Many people are nervous and fidgety, but they seem to be able to control their actions so that they're not destructive. In these boys, feelings of resentment are too great to be controlled completely, even when they themselves are not fully aware of their feelings. Although they have no plans at the moment, these boys are headed for serious trouble before the evening is over. Can this trouble be avoided? How can vandalism be reduced? Can these boys be persuaded to take part in some community activity in order to help them get rid of boredom? Active boys clubs with strong leadership and community support might win their interest and keep them off the street. The community has a responsibility here, but so have the boys themselves. They have to be able to meet the club halfway. A club doesn't mean much if you won't join. Our schools, too, in their after-hours activities as well as in the classrooms, can do much in the fight against vandalism. The sympathetic interest of good teachers and counselors can do wonders in making the world seem less cold and hostile. A better understanding of right and wrong might steer these boys away from the direction they are heading. But the key to the problem is in the family. It is here that moral values are first implanted, to be nurtured until they put down roots. Family, friends, community institutions, all play their role in the complex process through which every personality develops into its own individual form. These boys, through many unhappy and painful experiences, have come to feel resentful toward everyone. Say, there's a free movie at the community center tonight. Ugh, those free movies. Yeah, and anyway, it's always too crowded in there. <laughs> Their feeling isn't on the surface. 
and therefore it's hard to overcome, even when the community makes the effort. Want to see the film tonight, fellas? No, we're kind of busy tonight. How about a little basketball? No, we've got plans. Well, come in any time. Yeah, sure, Mr. Brewer. Yeah. Social worker. Boy, look at that. Looks more like a prison than a school. Yeah, sure it does. Hey, look. Look at that window. Say, it's open. How about that? Let's look, take a look around. It might be fun, huh? We better not. It'd be too bad if they catch us. What's the matter? Are you scared? No, I'm not scared. Me neither. Oh, come on. I can't hurt anything. Oh. A guard walking by now might save these boys from doing things they'll be sorry for later. But guards can't solve the real problem. How to keep inner feeling up until they burst out in unexpected acts of destruction. Even so small a thing as an unlocked window may trigger an act of vandalism. me, see? See how he puts his nose up against me? Probably thinks you're a carrier or something. Mm, sure is soft. Hey, look. Test papers. Your paper in here, Jeff? Wait. Yeah. I probably flunked. Say, how about that? Graded and everything. Yeah. Well, we can fix that. Here goes our whole test. Ed! Cut it out! Why? We're just helping Jeff pass the test. Hey, hey, let me know. Look, you stay there. Boy, will Mr. Cole be sore when he sees this. Up, this is how vandalism usually starts. Hey, what this? Not planned. Nothing to be gained or achieved. I know. Come on, let's get the Destruction has boiled up out of hidden resentments and strikes out blindly against everything in its path. Before the law, 
you and you alone are responsible for the shocking, appalling waste you've caused. But we know today there's more to it than that. You parents must share the responsibility, for somewhere along the line you have failed your sons. You have failed to teach them moral values. <laughs> And by denying them the love, the security, and the sense of belonging, which is important to every living being, you have hurt them as surely as though you had denied them food. I know that there are other factors, too. The school, the church, and the community all share in this important problem. But the basic fact remains that you three boys are yourselves responsible for your acts. Perhaps our doctors, our social workers, and others on our staff can help you overcome the fear and hate which has brought you before this court. Help you learn how to live a happy and normal life. Nevertheless, I have no choice but to sentence you. So ends another act of vandalism. An act of needless waste and destruction to all concerned.